Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Podcast with Specula. Um, basically, every time we have these sessions, we bring a new guest speaker to talk about different career options so that we can really highlight the different paths that you can take as a recent graduate. And the reason we, why we decided to start this podcast is because when, you're, when we are at university, you have a very skewed knowledge of the career options that are available to you based on the degree you study or based on the university that you go to. So we, we aim to really highlight the different pathways that graduates can take and even the most uncommon ones and the niche ones. And on today's episode, I'm glad to um, share with everyone that we have Dan on the call with us here, Dan D'Souza. And um, basically, it's one of those really hot topics that everyone gets really excited by. Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> everyone wants to start their own business. So Dan works in this sector. So um, I'm going to I'm not going to kill the boss too much. I'm going to give him the opportunity to make the introduction himself first. But basically, the point of today's episode is really to to let you guys into what life as an entrepreneur maybe looks like or what it's like, what are some of the myths of entrepreneurship and how realistic is it for a recent grad who doesn't have experience to start their own business and become successful overnight? Like how realistic is it to become the next Mark Zuckerberg? But no pressure. No, um, it's good to be invited. Thanks for for inviting me i appreciate it and um yeah i think it's really good what you're doing here so i'm happy to help out um yeah my name's dan and i actually firstly am not an entrepreneur i don't have my my own business yet um soon to be maybe but um yeah it's all about innovation with my job and i and i do hold a, a position at a uh, one of the top innovation corporate innovation firms in the uk and uh, we are expanding that uh, massively. Um, what my role is, is a manager at this firm. And what we do is corporate innovation, building new ventures and creating new businesses, which is where the entrepreneurial side comes into play, because we have made investments and work with startups every day of, of our um, working life. So, um, yeah, I can share a few insights into what I'm up to when when we get the questions going and what it kind of took for me to get into this position because it's quite it's it's an interesting um mm. job when you look at what's out there so um yeah, yeah back to you definitely it sounds really interesting because like even like corporate innovation when you're at uni you don't really hear of a particular role being available as working in corporate innovation. Um, so I think yeah. it would be useful for us to know even like, how did you end up in this position? And a lot of grads, they end up working in different corporate companies. I'm sure innovation is will become part of a big part of their role as well. So we can get into that. But first, like, did you know that when you finish university, you want to go into corporate innovation? Like, was that a purposeful career decision? Or you just fell into yeah. it now? Yeah, so it's an interesting question because innovations become this really big topic in the last few years because we see how well some of the american firms have done um creating new disruptive organizations and then a lot of corporates have said hey how can we do that and it's become this big buzzword which um i've just come into it and it's just all taken off in the last few years um coming into this sort of role i never thought i would be interested in this area because innovation in itself you have to have kind of been there and done it and and worn the t-shirt in a certain industry before you can look at how to innovate and create new new concepts but i've been quite lucky in my life to have had a father who was always around new tech and building companies and in business development and was very open about that in the house so we were always growing up being around that sort of mindset and when dad would bring work back to the house we would always be you know interested and curious and that kind of set me on the path of just consuming um everything to do with new tech new business etc mm -hmm. so when i went to university a good few years back now i just went down the business management path and 
I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I knew that it was going to be around business and uh, that that sort of field, but I was in the mindset of everyone else, you know, get a job, um, hopefully earn a nice big salary and, and go from there. So when I was in university, we had a, a thing called a placement scheme, which is like that sandwich course where you do the year in between your second and third year in the UK. And I was struggling to find a, a position I was really struggling and I think this is where we can talk about network later because network got me a really great position in the Tata group, um, specifically the communication side of the Tata group, which was actually one of the most techiest parts of the Tata group, which is this huge conglomerate in, in India. And we were doing a lot of the innovations and business transformation inside of the inside of the business and i've come in as this mid university level guy who like loves technology i've done some work experience before with my my family and now i'm in this really dynamic team in a corporate environment innovating creating new business ideas and i was what 18 19 which if you think about it who am I to be doing this at 18, 19, right? It's, um, it's uh, insane. And so I left, I did that for a year and a bit and then left that thinking, wow, like there's, there's a lot more out there than just a marketing job or a law job or, or something similar. Mm -hmm. And then in university, the final year, everyone want every student wants to be an entrepreneur. It's like the yeah really, sexy thing to have on your bio like entrepreneur and um i don't think a lot of people realize how difficult it actually is to be an entrepreneur right and we can talk about that as well but i was in, like surrounded by all of these individuals at university who wanted to be entrepreneurs but didn't see the world from how i saw it being in this uh, environment at my my internship and after I finished my university, I was still I was struggling to find a job because I was thinking, I don't want to go back to where I did the internship. Mm. I want to find something new. And I applied for every job, like probably a good hundred or so jobs. Wow. Um, yeah. And that was like, at the start, I was thinking, oh yeah, job's going to come easy after graduation. Like, it, I'll find something. And then I realized how difficult it was and I had to just apply, apply, apply. Mm. And I was getting into all of the, um, I was getting past all of the testing and all of the uh, like phone interviews for like the big banks and the like top consulting firms. And I was always getting to the, the in-person, um, I've forgotten what they call them now, actually. The in -centers. The assessment centers yeah and always get into that where you they take you to the conference rooms and you split out and yeah i was always failing then and they would always call me and say yeah no not not for us like you know better luck next time basically yeah. um and i was thinking that no, i'm just gonna be not not utilizing my skills and then what happened was i just started to be entrepreneurial and just kick on doors and and actually not just interview for jobs but find my job and i started to look online and i typed in corporate innovation innovation um mm. startup accelerators and and things like that keywords which i picked up in my internship i was just searching out what's out there yeah and the firm which i'm working for now i just knocked on the door and said well, virtually knocked on the door and said, hey, I'm, uh, you know, I'm Dan, I've, I've been doing this and I'm really keen to see what you have uh, going on in, in your in your firm. Mm -hmm. And being a small company, it, it is, uh, we had a chat and it ended up with me starting to do some startup scouting. Wow. So who did you send the email? Did you send it to like hey, someone in HR or the generic HR email? every email that i could find on a website <laughs> wow. it, uh, if they had like the ceo's email i would have sent him a message too like yeah but they, you know you don't have that <laughs> that on the on the website yeah um, but it was the so, oh that's my alexa <laughs> that's all right 
this is like this is so cool because that's something i feel like a lot of grads don't do they're like if there is no job posting like i'm not going to do it and uh even like yeah people are like probably now is even a lot more competitive than your time so you have to do it even more mm -hmm. so the fact that you did it back in the days where it probably wasn't as crazy as it is today it just goes to show that you have to do that even more now yeah i think i mean just going back to to who i emailed and then i'll answer your questions yeah. i emailed it was like hello at mycompany.com yeah was, hello on the website and that forwarded it to the right person in the company because i was just like here's what i do here's my cv i'm really interested to just have a chat really just just say hello um but going back to what you're saying on it's more important to do that now i think that any time past present future if you want to get into the type of role that i have you have to be this kind of ambitious go-getter and mm -hmm. i don't mean that in an arrogant sense i mean that in a you have to be enthusiastic for being interested in what you want to do mm -hmm. and i've seen that when i've looked over my peers at university and seen the types of jobs that they're in i can be certain that they wouldn't be in the types of jobs that they are not that, that they are in if they hadn't have gone out there and been enthusiastic yes there are some uh lucky individuals and some smart individuals who do very well in the assessment centers and all of the um the the really aggressive and competitive landscape of of grad jobs but the ones who really find what they want to do and it's like their dream job you have to bang on the doors and you have to find it and the firm like mine you're not going to find the jobs popping up on linkedin because they don't have the money to to promote just uh an entry level job so yeah you have to find it for yourself and um and yeah that's kind of how i got into my first role out of university wow that's so interesting um like i know quite a lot of people who like study degrees like business management or business corporate management etc and these kind of degrees don't really have a defined career path attached to them but i don't really come from that kind of background i had a defined career path attached to my degree even though i didn't end up working as which degree did you do chemical engineering mm. <laughs> random i worked in a pharmaceutical firm and then just did a 360 shift sure. um but nevertheless like is so it's becoming less and less important what degree you did um so how do you like go about defining which area like you knew that you want to start searching for like keywords like innovation etc mm -hmm. but like for a graduate who is not sure how do you say they should go about searching for where they should start their career and like as we said entrepreneurship is becoming very romanticized as well um do you think it's like realistic for someone who is like fresh out of uni just start their own business um that's a yes and no question but i'll explain it so your first question is about how grads can look for the job that they want and what i would say is that grads or graduates people in university and studying they should be curious individuals mm. and not curious in the sense that they want to go and learn more about their subject but learn more about the world because mm. when you're going through these academic pathways you're getting shunted in a certain direction because that's what the curriculum tells you to do but there's not a lot of information in academics which is here's how the world actually works and go out there and find out about it because it's very centered on what you what you're studying so because of my my background and me being quite a just a introverted introverted in my private life and extroverted obviously professionally now uh, i was just very curious and i read and i went out there and you know went through loads of wikipedia um you know adventures looking at different things and just got a picture of this world which i knew that things could be a lot different in the future than they are back when i was studying and i wanted to be a part of it really and try to have an impact in in certain areas now as a grad and a young person having an impact in the world is is the long game but yeah. 
I wanted to just do my part to make the world better after I had left it than I came into it. Mm. And to go into your, what, what was your second question about entrepreneurs, right? Yeah, like why does why does everyone want to be an entrepreneur? Like, <laughs> because I think people get the wrong end of the stick with entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship is basically risk and uncertainty, and it's not a case of right once you start a company you're going to get a lot of money from different individuals and then you're going to be a Mark Zuckerberg and that's an extreme there are entrepreneurs who don't make billions but they do very well for themselves yeah but if you're going to do that once you're out of university you're going to have to have like one of a number of things you're going to have to have a technology which is so valuable mm. and so peculiar that it's worth a lot of money <clears throat> and then that also takes you down the path of where well, you need to patent it you need to make sure that the it's protected um or the second thing is that you really really don't like to work for uh, someone which is similar to me i don't like hierarchy which is why i'm in the firm that i am we're mm. very flat structure but there are some people who have left university and they've gone straight into that do their own business and sometimes it works but i would say that it's like acting really mm. you get thousands of actors and only a small handful land the jackpot roles um or even get a role anyway yeah. so for people and i we spoke about this a while back in in private that you can be a, a young entrepreneur but you need to have some sort of you need to know what problems are out there in the world to solve and you need to actually be the right person to solve them yeah. so when we look at startups and entrepreneurs there are so many entrepreneurs who come to us and want to work with corporates they want investment and they just aren't ready for it because they need to have a bit more life experience before they you can invest in someone as a founder now i do take i do speak about this as the majority mm because the minority there could be these um really passionate and smart individuals who just have it and that's where you get these success stories from but i think at a young age you should always play the safe game to just build experience just keep building experience because yes. you've got so much time and it's what we also find is that graduates and young people including myself when i started are quite impatient and yes. we need to learn to take a page from our parents books and our on our elders to just take it easy and enjoy the enjoy life just going yeah. going its going its pathway yeah definitely like um one of the big takeaways i had from what you just said is a lot of people want to be entrepreneurs because they want to become like overnight success, make loads of money, think it's easy, etc. Yeah. But you mentioned you have to look at what problems are in the world sure. that needs to be solved. And can you solve it? Like, do you have the skills to solve it? Like, realistically, mm -hmm. <laughs> and when you're fresh out of uni, you don't even have the skills to work in a normal job with all the instructions they give you, let alone starting a whole company from scratch. If you had to like boil it down to maybe like three or four key skills, like maybe soft skills that an entrepreneur really need to have before they get started, what would you say those skills are? Oh wow! Well, um, so I, I've I've been on a few podcasts now, and I'm never good at the listings. Um, well, I, I'll try my best. So yeah. I think in terms of skills, a entrepreneur should have a a level of honesty and transparency that allows them to know when they don't know everything mm. and to not be not let their ego get in the way of letting people help them right that's something where we've seen that in the in, in our experiences that the people that think they can do it all themselves are the people that fail the fastest and so having that level of humility and just being a human mm gets you success as an entrepreneur you also need to be smart because <clears throat> no one's going to be helping you the whole way people are going to dip in and out of the journey so you've got to have a level of 
leadership ability and smarts to actually take yourself on that journey mm. and that leads to the final bit which is basically curiosity you've got to just be so curious it can't you, there's no there's no binary system which you can go and follow the dots and now you've got a business it's yeah you'll hit more nodes you'll hit more obstacles and it's your courage honesty and leadership to then basically take two steps back and then maybe 10 steps forwards or or maybe 20 steps back and you your your startup or your business is dead so yeah. it just takes a level of honesty cura um, courage uh transparency and and um and curiosity to to get there yeah. and that's just the that's just the traits then there's a another level of and, and where it comes down to you need more time in the market is you need to know where the problems are you need to know how to solve them yeah. and you need the network and people around you that can support you right yeah. because no one's really created a startup on their own mm. yeah Even they say self-made individual success they've had a network around them to help them out yeah definitely that's really interesting um like i feel like it's a bit similar to like leadership some people think you're a born leader some people think you can develop these traits do you think these traits are things that like you can actively work on developing or is something that you kind of need to be born with and like there are certain individuals who can be entrepreneurs and certain individuals who can't regardless of their level of experience so i think that it's more towards the born with it because there's a good phrase which gary vaynerchuk uses mm. and he's you know he's like marmite to everyone not everyone enjoys his his speaking yeah. he mentioned something really powerful and that is anyone can just become an entrepreneur and start a business right but the people that actually are good entrepreneurs did you start a you know hustling when you were a kid mm. in my experience when i was six seven eight nine years old we used to like find stuff and sell it sweets um mm. we found like some bathroom tiles on the on the ground and took them and then started to sell them on a little store we made zero money but we we tried and yeah. it was not a sense of creating a business when you're seven years old right you're just like trying to have fun with your friends and these are sort of the traits where some people would be doing other things and we were doing that mm. and that's kind of where the divide comes from when it comes to is it are you born with it or can you nurture it mm. but there are successful entrepreneurs who have come from a very rigid or corporate background and i'm a big advocate for corporate um entrepreneurs yeah. if you're talking from a very grassroots entrepreneurial you know leave university and become a an entrepreneur you've got to have been shown those traits since you were a kid mm. otherwise you are just a you know the hashtag want to be you yeah. know I agree. Like um, now, you mentioned that it it made me um remember this time I used to work for a company where everyone for that company was very very experienced, like thirty twenty years experience in their field. Yeah. But it wasn't a very successful startup. <laughs> like, and I similarly I've worked for startups with people who are not experienced at all, and it's very successful. Yeah. And and I definitely like the traits that you described sometimes it's just a personality sometimes upbringing wherever it comes from like some people seems to be more curious than others so same how, same as how some people are more extroverted than introverted so yeah. i definitely agree with that so just one final question on that then like the debate between trait versus idea which one do you think is more important like having a really good idea to become successful or do you think it's more about having the traits and the personality and then the idea will come it's the latter because mm. any good entrepreneur will have hundreds of ideas mm. um 
I mean, we can go back and forth on business ideas now, but it's execution, which is where the the real entrepreneurial spirit comes in. And, yeah. and again, I've not created my own business yet, so I'm not an entrepreneur. But having seen so many of them and being involved in entrepreneurs' lives for for this long, I can definitely say that it's the traits which will always be there, and the ideas are are infinite, right? Mm. Yes, yeah. that's, that's it. Okay, perfect. And then also there's a lot of carry on for a bit if you want yeah yeah sorry just one more thing uh, and then we can wrap it up um there's quite it's quite black and white like in terms of you either become an entrepreneur or you work for a company sure. but you are obviously kind of in the middle like corporate entrepreneurship like you can have entrepreneurial uh, mm. mindset and activities in a corporate scenario as well um what advice do you have for people who want to get into that kind of career paths in terms of like corporate entrepreneurship um mm. so the way that i got into it was through a bit of luck tenacity and just going for it um and i was just very fortunate to have a um a good learning experience at, at a young age to then take me into this so i guess i'm a bit of a a wild card in that case um which which i hope I hope can be copied, but I, I'm not too sure. The way that I would advise graduates is you've got to find something that you're passionate with. Yeah. You don't need to find that passion as soon as you leave university. You can jump through a few jobs and find what industry you like. Yeah. Um, you're not tied to your job. You can leave within a year if you wish and try something new. And always be curious because if, whatever company that you're in, there will be certain problems and issues that can be addressed in in any industry and i'm i'm industry agnostic because i do my corporate innovation work across industries yeah. um for any corporate that that needs our our support but with a grad that's my my advice is to try out different industries have a look at what's out there and keep curious because if you're a real innovator if you're a real entrepreneur you'll find a number of cool ideas for every industry you you work in and you can just bank those ideas until a time when you're ready and the market's ready for the idea and it's and it's it, it's the mindset game because i'll never stop being a curious individual until you know if i get fired from my job or i leave my job or, or whatever i'll still be the same person and i'll still be curious so um that's just for for any grads just be be patient and play the long game with all of this that's a very valuable lesson, which I think we can all definitely learn. So thank you so much for that. That was really, really insightful. Um, any last messages um, before we jump off? Um, no, no last messages on, on the questions. I guess like wherever I can help support you and, you know, speak to any grads who are interested in in what I do. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, I have limited time, so I'll let let yourself pick and choose who, who has a chat but um yeah wherever i can support you excellent thank you so much we'll definitely um on the um specular website we have mentors and we'll definitely include your profile there and then if people come through um we'll send you um their details um and i'm sure um there's a lot to learn from a lot of the things you mentioned whether you want to become an entrepreneur or just be innovative in your day-to-day -day job um, so thank you for that. And yeah, I really enjoyed the discussion. Amazing. Thanks for having me.